There was an interesting moment yesterday. The FBI Director Christopher Wray appeared before Congress, actually before the uh, House Committee, the GOP Oversight Committee, and he was really grilled on a couple of key subjects. Obviously, there's a lot of interest we're going to be spending some time on today around whether there were federal informants, agents, undercover people uh, in the crowd on January 6th. It's been a hot topic of uh, a hot topic of discussion. The FBI director was specifically pressed on this, and let's listen very carefully to his answer. Here's what he had to say. How many individuals were either FBI uh, employees or people that the FBI had made contact with were in the January 6th uh, entry of the Capitol and surrounding area? So I, I really need to be careful here talking about uh, where we have or have not used confidential human sources. Was there one January or more? 6th was there or one or more individuals that would fit that description on January sixth that were in or around the Capitol? I, I believe there is a uh, a filing in one of the January six cases that can provide a little more information about this, and I'm happy to see if we can follow back up with you. I, I just want that. an yeah. answer. Was there one or more? I mean, you would know if there was at least one individual who worked for the FBI who entered the Capitol on that day. Uh, I can't, again, I just can't speak to that here, but I'm happy to get the court filing look, that- Look, it's been two years, and you're now, you're now come before us. The gentleman asks these questions, makes all kinds of insinuations, and you, you nod your head yes, and then I ask you simply, was there one or more? And you won't answer that. So I'm going to make the assumption that there was more than one, more than five, more than 10, and that you're ducking uh, the, the question because you don't want to answer for the fact that you had at least one and somehow missed understanding that some of the individuals were very dangerous and that there were others inciting individuals to enter the Capitol after others broke windows. So I think that the best point there, Crystal, is it's been two years. We got to, like, you know at this point whether there's more than one or not. There's also, I found in a little bit later questioning, there was a parsing around agents and undercover employees, which mm. is a little bit of a dodge. They're like, well, there were no FBI agents involved. I'm like, well, first of all, let's see about that. Uh, let's find out. But uh, the core allocation from very the beginning has really been also about informants and about people who were developed confidentially as well. I mean, from that, it's almost certain, considering we know from the court filings that have come out around the Proud Boys and Rico Tario, around the Oath Keepers as well, like who was, you know, who, who wasn't a Fed um, in some of these organizations. Mm -hmm. And it also comes to the core question, which I think is correct. Now, look, let's not say that these people aren't acting in bad faith, but they're like, well, if you guys had all this info and you knew so much about what was going on, how could you then have the debacle occur in which you are so completely unprepared? That also is, you know, a, a fundamentally one of the core questions here around, like, was this a screw up or did this, does this justify, you know, basically encasing the entire capital as a cage for several months and spending half a billion dollars on National Guard deployment. Yeah. Well, and I think that's why they're so reluctant to answer any of these questions. This is humiliating for the FBI. That should be. I mean, think yeah. of all the, like, fake plots that they invent mm -hmm. and then swoop in to disrupt Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping. I mean, <laughs> throughout the uh, war on terror, the way they would entrap young Muslims and invent these plots and set them up. So when you had an actual threat, and you had informants littered throughout all of these organizations. And this is not a mystery at this point. I mean, we know this from, as you said, Sagar, the court filings with the Oath Keepers, with the Proud Boys in particular. But we know that the feds had informants throughout a number of these right-wing organizations that yes. were involved in January 6th. Like, and you weren't able to disrupt what was an actual violent threat? That's humiliating. Mm -hmm. And so to me, none of, at this point, the mystery is solved. The answer is they had tons of informants. They should have been able to know. We know there's a ton of reporting about how these informants were never asked about the activities of their own organizations. A lot of what they were asked by the feds was like, what do you know about Antifa? Especially the Proud Boys um, informants within their organization. There was no curiosity about whether the Proud Boys themselves posed some sort of a threat. It was all about like, oh, you've got proximity to Antifa, tell us about that. And so meanwhile, they completely miss this thing that's developing right underneath their own noses. So 
I haven't seen any evidence that there's like truth to this idea that this was some sort of a false flag. And in part because, again, this is nothing but embarrassing for the FBI and the deep state that this was allowed to unfold. And they basically, you know, had informants in the crowd that did not tell them key details about what was going to happen. Exactly. And there also was a really interesting moment where they referenced some of the stuff that came out in the Twitter files about FBI agents specifically flagging and taking things down, censorship requests, flagging requests that was directly brought to his attention. So here's what he had to say when he was confronted over that. The evidence shows you, your agency, the people that directly report to you, suppressed conservative-leaning free speech about topics like the laptop, the lab leak theory of COVID-19's origin, the effectiveness of mask and COVID-19 lockdowns and vaccines. But what I would say is the FBI is not in the business of moderating content or causing any social media company to suppress or censor. That is not what the court has found. What I would also say is among the things that you listed off, I find ironic the reference to the lab leak theory. The idea that the FBI would somehow be involved in suppressing references to the lab leak theory is somewhat absurd when you consider the fact that the FBI was the only, the only agency in the entire intelligence community to reach the assessment that it was more likely than not that that was the explanation but your for the agents, pandemic. Your agents pulled it off the internet, sir. That's what the evidence in the court has found. So it's kind of an interesting little testy exchange. He's not wrong in terms of when they talked about it, but they didn't start talking about lab leak until literally like two months ago. So before that, though, as uh, the congressman points to, given what has been revealed in the court, and I know yeah, you guys did a great job on this, the Supreme Court case that came out around the Biden administration and their ability to have censorship requests with mm. social media companies, which, of course, they're freaking out about um, already, which really does tell you. But at its core, I mean, what they are, what he is couching behind here is saying, well, we don't censor anything. We just strongly advise oh, that okay. you take it down. That's like, well, as we saw from the Twitter files, FBI agent says, take down this shit posting account with six followers saying that the election's on Wednesday. And at a core level, you're like, why are we paying the salary of someone right. who is doing this for a living? That's insane. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, there's multiple levels right. there. There's, <laughs> yeah. first of all, the, like, disturbing dystopian surveillance and, like, right. violation of First Amendment and all of those sorts of pieces. And then when you actually look at the tweets that they were flagging to be taken down, you're like— this is what you're spending yeah. your time on? Remember there's a one lady who was like some resistance activist who was pretending like she said some snarky thing about like, for everyone who shows up without a mask, I'm gonna change one vote from Republican to Democrat. Like clearly a joke. She had like right. five followers or something, got two likes, you know, and they're like, Literally. this is a threat yeah. to their national security. It, it's just it, clown show stuff. But then also it's very serious because of obviously when these social media companies get a strongly worded request from the FBI, the federal government, that's going to carry a lot of weight with them. So what you were referring to, Sagar, is there's a case now um, filed by a number of attorneys general uh, working its way through the court system. One federal uh, court judge found that, that they actually issued an injunction that the Biden administration, unless it is an actual issue of national security, can no longer have these communications of just, you know, nicely suggesting a variety of uh, tweets and users and whatever that need to be censored or blocked. So this is very much a live issue. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so anyway, look, the FBI director, uh, certainly getting pressed there. Uh, I thought it was interesting. I do still, though, we need less grandstanding and more, like, actual cooperation. That's, that's the yeah. biggest problem is, look, it's great to see him grilled, and I think that's awesome. But we, how many clips have we now played in this show over two years of FBI director refuses to answer around you? It's like, we got it. Look, at a certain point, like, do the work and actually get some of this stuff done. Or if they're not, you know, hold them whatever in contempt of Congress for refusing to provide some of this info because it's clear that like everything just always plays out the same without any real confirmation. And confirmation is with all the stuff that's actually important, the documents about the cases and all that. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.